Let's uh, let's do what we do every Thursday at four uh, four twenty ish, and that's go to Great Coast Cell, best in the business in, in terms of evaluating film uh, with NFL Films for more than forty four years. Great Coast Cell, what's up? How are you? What's up, guys? How's it going? Uh, we're good, man. Uh, just uh, wanting to talk a little uh, draft prospects, if you don't mind. Sure, I've just been you know grinding away trying to you know get as many guys done as I can, or at least little bits and pieces before I go to the combine, you know, but. Um, it takes a lot of time now, you know. It, it yeah. takes a lot of time to watch these guys. Well, um, we spent some time on quarterbacks uh, a few weeks ago. We spent some time on wide receivers, which uh, we didn't hit all of them uh, by any stretch of the imagination. So oh, we'll now, there's a that. lot of receivers in this draft that are going to play in the league. There's a lot of receivers. I love that. Uh, Titans need some. So uh, <laughs> there's that. You know what else they need, Greg Cosell? A left tackle. Um, what do you see on uh, tape from Joe Alt at Notre Dame? You know, I've gone back and forth on this, and I've talked to a lot of people. Um, I did not love Joe Walt's tape. Um, you know, I I think that, wow. you know, his game is built on athleticism, length, technique, more than physicality, strength, and power. He's, he's an athletic finesse tackle. Um, he doesn't have a lot of strike power in his hands and throughout his body. He's more passive than aggressive. He doesn't fire his hands. Um you know, in the run game, he relies more on, on excellent body position, which he's very good at. He's really good with his body position. He's got a really good understanding of angles and leverage. Um, but, you know, he, he, the part about not firing his hands, that, that bothers me. Now, again, maybe it doesn't others. Um, I did have a conversation with someone who agreed with me on that. Um, but then there's other people who I respect greatly who think he's a machine and that he's, you know, going to be a 10 year great player. So, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I, I think it's mixed, but I, I, I did not love his tape. Mm. Wow. That's really interesting. That um, is. so man, uh, so let's go to Fashano then, uh, from Penn state Fashano. What do you think about him? Yeah, Fashanu, I haven't done as much yet this year as um, you know, as I will. He's he's not a guy that uh, that I've gotten to you know yet because there, there's just so many guys. Um, l- let's leave him alone for the moment. The guy, there are a couple of guys that I watched that I really like. Um, what I really like the Oregon State kid. Um, okay, talk us through. It's Talisa. I don't know how you say his last name. He played on the yeah. right side, right? Yeah. It, it's uh, Talisa Fuaga, I believe. Wow. And he's, he was the right tackle. Now, this yeah. guy, to me, I think he's one of the best O-line prospects in the draft. This guy is incredibly strong. He's got great size. Um, he's got athletic movement. Um, there were times watching his tape, I thought he was the best offensive tackle prospect in the class with his profile, size, strength, athleticism, nasty demeanor. Um, he's really good in the run game. He's a take-no-prisoners menace kind of blocker in the run game. I think he's a really good athlete. Um, you know, I think he has the traits where he could transition at either tackle position. I think the delineation between left and right tackle guys, to me, doesn't matter anymore in the league. Um, the only There's only one reason it matters, the blind side of the quarterback. But in terms of who you're playing against, I don't think it matters at all. You know, a ton of rushers rush from the left side of the defense now, big-time rushers, you know. The Max Crosby's, the Boses, they rush from the left side. T.J. Watt. So I, I don't think that delineation matters. But Fuaga is a guy that I that I really really like. Um, another guy I like is the um, the left tackle from uh, Washington, um, and that's um, Fotana. Um, he's another guy that I think is he's his body type is not exactly what you want, and some might see him as a guard. Just because of the body type, he's not he's long. He does, he's not rangy, but he's really athletic. Um, and uh, you know, obviously, they threw the ball a lot at Washington with Michael Penix, and they threw the ball down the field. So you saw him with a lot of the pass sets that are required in the NFL. You know, the forty-five degree sets, the vertical pass sets. So he's a guy that that I, I really liked as well. Those two guys, you know, really stood out to me. Um, on tape and you know i'm trying to think of some of the other guys because you know i jump around when i watch tape because i can't watch one i can't watch 10 guys in a row at one position um yeah. but for shanu I, I i did him over the summer and just seen a little of him this year 
he's another guy. He's got great size and length for the position. I mean, you know, he, he looks the part of a left tackle for Shano. So, you know, in some ways, all these guys I like more than all, and I might be in the minority, but this is the way I feel watching tape. So uh, to go back to all just – just to, from what I pulled from what you said, the is it maybe a lack of aggressiveness at the position a little bit that you see there? Yeah, I would say that's fair, Don. I think he's okay. more passive than aggressive. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, yes, he's he's a he's a plus athlete. I don't think he's a great athlete. I, I know some people believe that. Uh, people I respect think that he's a special talent. Um, yeah. I did not come away from watching his tape believing that. And I watched him last summer uh, from 2022 when I felt that way. And I watched him. I'm going to actually do more work on him this year, but I've seen a, a significant number of games. And, you know, I just felt that he needs to be more aggressive and assertive with his hand strikes and pass protection. He's got a tendency to place them as opposed to fire them. Um, he doesn't shock pass rushers. And too often, rushers got inside of him and drove him back. Now, there were times he then was able to to sort of recover. But, you know, now in the NFL, when you're playing against better guys, do you recover if guys get inside of you? Right. I don't know. You know, that, you know he's much more of an extender with his arms than a striker. And, and oh. you know, he's got long arms, so sometimes that could compensate that. Yeah. for it. But still... You know, you just like to see him be really aggressive with his strikes as opposed to passive. So uh, talking about the Oregon State guy, because you mentioned the the kind of right tackle, left tackle, like, yes, left tackle is the blind side. But um, uh, is That's that a great point? Yeah, it is way. a great point. Yeah. But is is he a guy like a guy like that? If, if you draft him, you keep him on the right side. Is that all he's ever played? Do you switch him to the can he play left tackle? You know what I mean? Like, how how does that work when you watch film on on guys? Can you see well, if they can move? I guess. I think there's there's an adjustment for sure, and he's yeah. he's a two year starter at right tackle for Oregon State. Think of Penny Sewell. Penny Sewell was a left tackle in college. They moved him to right tackle in his first year in Detroit. He struggled a bit, and and since then he's been great. Um, yeah. you know, because he settled in. He's obviously got great traits, and he's a great player. Um, if if you want to move Fuaga to left tackle, and I think he has the traits to play there, clearly. He's got tackle traits. Um, would there be an adjustment? There probably would be just because it's a whole different deal. You know, right. it's different with your kick slide. It's different with your hand usage. So, yes, I believe there would be an adjustment. And I did speak to someone who has studied him in great detail, who's a scout for a team, who said that it did take him a little bit to kind of learn, even in Oregon State. So there is a learning curve there. But in terms of, of the player, you know, one, one of the things you look at when you look at, at, at offensive linemen, particularly tackles, is their balance. This guy was always on balance i mean he was i watched five games okay and i may watch one more just because i like him um he's never on the ground i mean i think he was on the ground one time in the games i've watched this guy has really really good balance um you know and and i i just thought that i knew nothing about him don absolutely nothing when i put the tape on and it, he just jumped out to me interesting uh have you taken i'm sorry sorry no, you you cool. I, I was gonna say I think Savage and them raved about him coming back from the senior bowl. Oh yeah, those two sticking together. So, um, be interesting to hear this take on it too. I I did want to know. Did you look at um J C Latham or Amarius Mims? Either one of them are coming out of. I've seen Latham. Yes, Latham is a he's a man's man now. Um, <laughs> you know, Latham is one of those guys. He's just a man. Um, and I think that um. You know, he's he's a guy who could probably step right in and start. You know, he's got incredible size and mass. Run game, he's a monster, comes off the ball low. He generates a lot of force as a run blocker. For a man built the way he is, he's got light, agile feet and pass pro. He's got the needed range. See, a lot of guys who are sort of built the way he is, because he's not built long. Um, he's built more, and you know, there's more of a mass to his build than a lane. But so you think in terms of range and pass protection, are they rangy enough to, to seal, you know, control the arc where where edge pass rushers have to turn in order to close to the quarterback? And he was able to do that. And he's got tremendous grip strength. 
tremendous grip strength. So you're dealing with um, a guy that has a powerful feel to everything he does. He's a big man with agile movement, and he finishes. He's another guy, right side guy, right? Like so. That's, to Don's that's question where he about played. Trans- yes, that's where he played yeah. at Alabama. To, to Don's question about transition, do you see those kinds of traits in him or that he might be? Able yeah, to do that? I mean, can he do that? I think he can. The you know, do you want him to do that? That's a different question. That would be team specific. Um, as far as Mims, um, I need to watch the game from last year, the Ohio State Georgia game, because that's the game I'm told by many that is you know, his best game. Cause you know, he didn't play a lot this year and that, that to me is a concern. He's hurt a lot. You know, he hasn't played a lot of football. So the question is if you draft him and you may like his traits, and I think he's got pretty good traits from the snaps I've seen. But the question is, is this guy ready to play at the NFL level? He has not played a lot of football. Interesting. Um, are there, a, there are a couple other guys. I don't know if you've seen like Graham Barton is from here. Played at Duke. Tyler Guyton did some things at the Senior Bowl. I've, I've seen a couple Barton. Of guys there. I, I personally think Barton is best suited to play inside in the league. Um, you know, I think he's he's to me just watching the way in which he plays. He's a compact player. Not that he's short, but he plays more compact. To me, he plays like a guard. He doesn't play like a tackle. Um, so, I, to me, I think he transitions best to the league as a guard and anybody that you that we may overlook you always have a gym a, a, a hidden gym somewhere in there coach yeah i'm trying to you know think of the guys that i've seen because you know like i said slay for me you know i i, I work <laughs> through guys uh you know it take it takes a little time um, absolutely there is one guy who i need to do, do more work on but my mm-hmm. initial thoughts on him were very intriguing and he's got ridiculously long arms with a great wingspan and that's a kid from illinois who will be at the combine named julian pearl this kid looks the part of an nfl left tackle i mean he's got prototypical size and frame his arm length is 35 inches which is really long um you know he to me he's a really intriguing prospect um you know a lot of the mock drafts and all that you never know about that stuff you never know how teams think about players so, you know, I don't know what, what the mocks mean personally, which is why I, I don't do mocks. But Pearl, um, I'll be very curious to, to get some thoughts from people when I'm at the Combine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because so remind us real quick, because we had the uh, conversation yesterday uh, at what the tape showed on Peter Skaronsky that shows that he's a tackle, <laughs> or he's a guard, not a tackle. <laughs> yeah, I... I I thought Skaronsky was another guy that, that in some ways is like Graham Barton. I thought he's compact in the way in which he plays. Like, I don't think he plays rangy. Um, and, you know, so I, I saw him more as a guard. And, you know, and obviously he was up and down this year, as you guys know. But I think uh, that he'll end up being a good player. But I just, you know, he, he plays very well within the cylinder, kind of a straight line cylinder. And I think that that plays better at the guard position. Okay. There you go. There he and, is. It. And his arms are shorter, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that was, that was another factor. And, and different coaches have different views on that. But if memory serves me correctly, his arms were 32 and a quarter, which is oh. considered well, much too short. that's way different than 35. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, for some, that's that's a non-starter tackle in the NFL. Wow. There okay. he is. He's Greg Cosell at Greg Cosell on Twitter. Must follow if you like football. And if you uh, are listening to us, I'm sure you like football. Uh, Greg, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, Cosell. All right, Have guys. Appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. How about that? I did not love Joe Alt's tape. Yeah. That's sad awesome. Interesting. No, but the reasons he didn't love Joe Alt's tape, like now I want to go watch a bunch yep. of Joe Alt to to – make my to form my own opinion but the passive not aggressive that's concerning yeah tries to get away with athleticism 